freeze! Don't shoot. You a cop? I'm not NYPD. I came in with the Bravo team. Who are you with? And what happened to SEAL Team 10? They're all dead. All of them? Oh, that's bad. Did I tell you you could move? It's all right. He's not one of the bad guys. Don't go pointing that thing everywhere, kid. What's your name? My name is Peter. Peter Stillman. I'm lecturer at Navscolio at Indian Head, also a consultant for the NYPD bomb squad. A poor old man who got dragged along for this picnic. I thought you'd retired. I did. Can't keep up with everybody, as you can see. A famous church got wiped off the map thanks to me, with too many lives inside. All I lost was this leg. So you're the bomb disposal guy. Kid, this is the bomb disposal guy. Open any explosives disposal textbook and you'll see his name. <laughs> Just ancient history now. Why did they bring you out of retirement then? Because the terrorist group here includes one of my students. The Emperor of Explosives, Fat Man. He built an atomic bomb when he was only 10. I created him in a sense. And that's why you're here. I'm pretty rusty. I was supposed to supervise the bomb disposal. Looks like it was taken care of before I had my turn. I wouldn't say that. There are at least two people here who can claim to be experts at bomb disposal. Are you two with SEAL Team 10? I didn't see you at the mission briefing. Oh, we're with another squad. My name is Pliskin, Lieutenant Junior Grade. Honored to meet you, sir. Mr. Pliskin, do you have any experience with explosives disposal? Don't worry about me. And he looks young, but he can do it. But we need more manpower. I'm, uh... What's your name? Raiden. That's an odd name. Any other survivors? There was also an engineer with me. An engineer? A skinny guy. He went in with us. Where is he? I haven't seen him since that skirmish. Was he killed? I don't think so. I didn't find his body. I see. They told me he was a security systems architect for the Big Shell. Why would they take a civilian along? Everything in this structure is computer controlled. He was supposed to get us past all the security measures. I never heard anything about that. He had official orders with him. Hmm. We'll leave that for later. Right now we need to figure out how to deal with all the bombs. But there's no one left from the SEAL's EOD squad. Yup, so we have to do it ourselves. But I've never defused a bomb before. Hold on a sec. Off to confer with the CO again? Glad to hear Stillman is safe. Assist him in any way possible to clear the C4 from the structure. Colonel, you know I've never been trained in bomb disposal. It's all right. The man you're working with is the best in the field. All you have to do is follow his directions. You will, of course, keep your identity and mission objectives to yourself. Is it true that an engineer came in with Stillman? I wasn't informed of that. It's probably something the SEALs decided on their own. Hmm. There are more important issues at hand, Raiden. The enemy may retaliate for the failed assault. Get those C4s neutralized now. Colonel, I'm not qualified for bomb disposal. Jack, it's me. Rose? You can do this. Trust me. You haven't had bomb disposal training per se in VR, but you're more than capable of handling C4. This is a little different from using C4. You're up for this. You know that. How about it, kid? Are the results in yet? There's no need to think about this so much. You won't actually be dismantling the bomb. That's not for amateurs. What we'll try here instead is a temporary freezing measure. Here, look at this. This is a C4 bomb. It's live. You can see it pulsing. Now you spray this on the sucker and... There we go. Simple, huh? 
The spray freezes the detonator instantly. How long does the effect last? There's no way the thing can detonate in this condition. Even if you leave it alone, it'll stay out of commission for at least 24 hours. That's enough time. If we had the manpower, I'd recommend complete disposal. But this will have to do. The spray can be used from several yards away. Now check the floor, ceiling, walls, under a table, everywhere. Try to imagine the locations the bomber would choose. That won't be easy. We don't know a thing about Fat Man. Is there anything that'll help us locate the bombs? Here, take this with you. It's what they call an ion mobility spectrometer. It can recognize ionized gas emitted by C4s. The what? In other words, that little gadget sniffs out C4's scent. That's right. I've established a link-up with your radar network, so any scent detected will be represented visually. Have the sensor activated and keep your eye on the radar. What if he's using some other odorless substance? I know Fat Man well. I know how into his own aesthetics he is. Signatures? Yes. On every bomb he builds, he always leaves a trace of the cologne he uses. The sensor also picks up that particular scent spectrum. Is that something he learned from you? No, it was his own quirk. He wouldn't work by any rules except his own. And he followed them like a religion. And common sense wasn't one of his strong points. I thought I taught him everything I knew. I have no children of my own, and I thought I found a son in him. He had the right stuff, you know. There's something very unusual about an ability like that. Even at Indian Head, he got special treatment. I remember some people called him one of the fat cats. <laughs> Maybe that's what started all this. I didn't teach him the most important thing I had to tell him. There are some things you have to pass on. The trick is to know which one. Right. All I taught him was skills. And now I have to stop him from using it to destroy us all. Let's see how well that sensor works. All right. I'm activating them. Watch. You see the green stuff on the radar? That's a visual representation of the C4 scent detected by the sensor. It's a pretty big area, isn't it? Don't complain. It's better than nothing. Just activate the sensors and search the area, okay? All right. Don't forget that you need the radar to use this system. Log into the node at every strut and turn the radar on. We have to keep out of the enemy's sight, too. Because the radar gets knocked offline when we're spotted? Exactly. Fat Man would have allotted some C4s here in strut C as well. Here? I know the structure of this facility, and if he wants to take out the plant, where he would target. You know this for sure? Of course. I taught him the techniques he uses. His ideas are based on my theories. Demolition is a kind of ideology. It makes no exceptions for time or place. Big Shell consists of two hexagons joined in on in, north to south. There should be packets of C4s on each of the vertices, or the struts in this case. You need at least that to take a building of this integrity out. Hmm. Six on shell one, another six on shell two. A total of twelve bombs at least. Considering the shell's architecture and composition from an engineering standpoint, that's my conclusion. And it's exactly what he would have decided as well. Kid, this place is all yours. I'll take care of Shell 2. Take this. What's this? Security card issued to Shell personnel. The Big Shell security layout includes varying levels of clearance. The clearance level is identified by the number printed on these doors. Wrighton, your card key can open doors with security clearance level 1. Pliskin, your card can get you into level 3 areas. You need it to get next door to Shell 2. How did you get this? That engineer I told you about gave it to me. He was supposed to program a set of all access cards once we were on site. Unfortunately, this card won't get you into every area of this structure. 
We'll have to deal with the remaining security lockouts as they come up. Let's get going. You stay here. No, I'm going. The two of us can handle it, don't worry. But... You'll just slow us down with that leg of yours. There's a war going on here. I don't have time to babysit anymore. Why don't you just let us handle the grunt work? You can tell us what to do over the radio, like in the original mission plan. All right. I'll give you instructions from here. I may also need to prepare a backup plan, just in case. In case of what? Good luck to both of you. This is a dangerous one. Who dares, wins. If anything comes up, let me know. My frequency is 140.25. Good luck, kid. I'll see you later. Semper Fi. That man's no seal. I don't even think he's a Navy man. What? Semper Fi. Marine Corps talk. Normally, team leaders stay in the CP and give orders with those headphones. And as far as I know, SEALs keep their officers away from the field. And Who Dares Wins is a model of the British Special Air Service. Is he one of the terrorists, then? No, somehow I don't think so. If there's someone to suspect, I'd put my money on you. I'm... Just take care of those bombs for now. What about you? They could be back in this area soon. I'll hide out in this pantry for a while. If I lock the door, it should be all right. Plenty of food in here too, so you don't need to worry about me. I'll give you instructions by codec from here. Good luck, kid. Bomb disposal is a face-off with your own mortality. Don't let the fear get to you. When you give in to the fear, the darkness comes. If you see an appro- You will be able to- A grip gate. Push the- That pistol you have is a SOCOM. It's a 45 caliber offensive handgun designed for the American Special Ops Command. With 12 rounds of 45 ACPs, it has outstanding stopping power. The SOCOM has a minimum service life, averaging over 6,000 rounds, and has a five round group capacity that extends within a 1.4 inch radius. It's a bit large, but the SOCOM is a gun you can trust. It also comes equipped with a laser aiming module. A suppressor can be attached to the SOCOM to silence gunshots. You should try to find one. Tell me a little more about Dead Cell. Dead Cell was a shadow unit within the SEALs organization. Right. They handled surprise raids on vital government facilities, didn't they? Yes. They were originally put together to check the nation's military security system. The unit was the brainchild of ex-president George Sears. Dead Cell was a secret unit positioned at the opposite end of anti-terrorist outfits such as Delta Force and SEALs. Were they always a... Group of madmen? Yeah. No, they got weird when Colonel Jackson, Fortune's husband, was sent to jail. Sent to jail? For what? Corruption. He misappropriated government funds. 
Sounds like he deserved it. That's what everybody else thought, except for the members of Dead Cell. They felt the Colonel was falsely accused. Fact is, they took the case to the powers that be, but they never managed to reopen the case. Was there any truth to their claim? Who knows? Whatever the situation is, Dead Cell's name was tainted. And Colonel Jackson? He was being held at Leavenworth. Was? Meaning he's been released? Well, in a manner of speaking, the Colonel's dead. Oh. Apparently, he lost the will to live and died in prison. The members of Dead Cell snapped with the loss of their leader. They underwent a radical change and became uncontrollable. And that's why they undertook this terrorist operation. Seems as good a reason as any. Vamp is a member of Dead Cell. Born in Romania, his specialty is knives. But I guess you know that by now. When he was just a kid, he lost his family to a terrorist bomb that went off in a church they were attending. His body pierced by a crucifix, Vamp was buried under the rubble for two days before he was finally rescued. During those two days, he survived by feeding on the blood of his family to quench his thirst. That was how he acquired a taste for blood. So that's why they call him Vamp. No, Vamp isn't for vampire, it's because he's bisexual. Rumor has it, Vamp was the lover of Scott Dolph, the Marine Commandant who accidentally died two years ago. Scott Dolph was also the father of Fortune, the Dead Cell leader. Fortune's old man? But Fortune and Vamp? Uh, you noticed, eh? Not bad for a rookie. All uh, right. As you say, Vamp and Fortune are very close. Not lovers, but very close. Friends? No, there's more to their relationship than that. But Vamp was her father's lover. Would it have been better if it was with her mother? Well... I don't really think they care what you think. Focus on the mission. By the way, have you ever met the guy before? No. But he seemed to know you. Right. Well, I... No. It can't be. What? Nothing. I told you the Dead Cell is a group of madmen. I wouldn't take anything they say very seriously. What do you know about that strange woman? You mean Fortune? She's the Dead Cell leader. Her real name is Helena Dolph Jackson, known to her friends as Lady Luck. Lady Luck? Yeah. She got the name because bullets seemed to veer away from her in battle. Oh. People have heard her say that her fortune in battle was payback for the lousy luck she's had in life. Lousy luck? The death of her father, the Marine Commander. The conviction of husband and Dead Cell leader, Colonel Jackson. These events were followed by her mother's suicide, the loss of a husband, and the idea of a convict in the family apparently took her over the edge. Fortune was three months pregnant at the time, and the shock of her mother's death led to the loss of her child. Add to this her husband's death in prison a few months later, and to sum it up, in the six months after her father's death, she lost her family and everything that mattered in her life. Jeez, she's had it rough. Yeah. The thing is, she didn't grieve long. Instead, she joined the military. Now why is that? Do I look psychic? My best guess is revenge. I heard that she firmly believed that her husband was framed. Anyway, by the time she came out of basic training, she'd proven many times over that she was gifted with an unusual streak of luck. In fact, some say she sold her soul for it. Her soul? Her uncanny luck earned her a reputation that led to her appointment as the head of her husband's unit, Dead Cell. Fat Man. Supposedly, he's nicknamed after an atomic bomb, but to me, he's just a fat man. Something straight out of a sideshow. If he even has a bit of spare time, he spends it disassembling and assembling his Glock over and over again. He can't stand to have his hands still. He's extremely vain about his hands, keeps his fingers as slender and soft as a woman's. They say he's always looking at his hands, giving himself manicures. Pliskin, I saw someone wearing a cardboard box just now. A box? I don't know anything about that. You sure you weren't imagining things? Of course I'm sure. Do you think it's one of the members of Dead Cell? How should I know? I don't want to fight someone like that. Why not? Because it looks so dumb. Anyone who's willing to be seen like that must be completely insane. I mean, he's a psycho, there's no question about it. Oh. Uh, yeah.
Nothing here. Freeze! <gasps> Help! Freeze! Huh? Don't kill me! Raiden, at your feet, there's a hatch for pipe or gauge maintenance. Face the hatch and push the action button to open it. There may be something you can use, so check the inside thoroughly. Don't kill me! This is Raiden. Disposal of the C4 in strut D is complete. Explosives were planted on the maintenance hatch. That's not like him. Anything wrong? Maybe. Pliskin's reported other locations too, and none of them are effective demolition points. What do you mean? It means that they wouldn't be the best places to choose if you wanted to destroy this place. Are you saying they don't plan on blowing the shell up? It certainly seems that way. So far we haven't seen anything but a waste of good explosives. Unless, of course, we're missing something. A trap? He couldn't have overlooked the fact that I would be called into this. There's something going on. What's going on? Respond! Communications with Strut D have ceased. Carry out an investigation immediately. No sign of the missing man. Nothing else to report. Nothing here. Somebody there. Hmm. Hmm. Is there somebody there?
care of that annoying fly. What's the situation over there? Puzzling. I saw a man dressed like a ninja just now. Ninja? It's the only way to describe it. A kind of cyborg ninja complete with a sword. What? Are you hiding something from me? Olga, are you sure it wasn't an arsenal Tengu? Don't be a fool. Think I wouldn't know the difference? I've never seen field gear like that ever. All right. We'll intensify patrols. Anything else? Actually, one more thing. You'll find it hard to believe, though. I saw a man hiding under a cardboard box. Where? On the connecting bridge to Shell 2. Hmm. So you believe me this time? I've seen someone use that box trick before. We'll lay a trap on the Shell 2 connecting bridge. Over and out, then. Freeze! You must be one of Dead Cell. Of course not. What a thing to say. Drop your gun! Not a chance. I saw a female soldier, Russian, 
Must be Olga Gerlukovich. How do you know? Unlike you, I've been briefed. She's not a dead cell? No. She commands a Russian private army. They must be the ones patrolling the big shell. That's right. She's led the group ever since her old man, Colonel Gerlukovich, died. Watch yourself with her. She's a tough one. Freeze! Huh? What are you? Right in here. The C4 reported on the roof of Strut E has been taken care of. Explosives were planted on the Harrier 2 stationed on the roof. You're taking too much time. You should work a little faster. There's no time, Raiden. I've got my hands full here, so it doesn't look like I can help you. It's in your hands. Well done. It looks like there are no more bombs in that strut. Now, head for the other struts. Right, I'm done with one more C4. This one was in a spot so narrow I had to crawl in to get at it. Raiden, don't ever turn your back on that Olga woman. Olga Gerlukovich, daughter of Colonel Sergei Gerlukovich, ex Gru and former Spetsnaz commander. She's the leader of Colonel Gerlukovich's private army that's been wandering around the big shell. Those men were gathered by Colonel Gerlukovich. Following his death, she inherited his command and now exercises full control. Her father's name was widely respected throughout the old Soviet regime, and he was the goal of just about every military man. Why would a respected soldier become a leader of those cutthroats? The collapse of the Republic resulted in a lot of unemployed soldiers. Most found themselves suddenly cast out into the civilian world, hopelessly lost. The colonel took these men in. He organized a mercenary army and led his men from battle to battle in various disputed regions around the world, hoping that one day he would rebuild his homeland. Rumor has it that during the Shadow Moses incident, he planned a rendezvous with Liquid Snake's men and assist in their uprising. 
I assumed that the revolt figured into his reconstruction plans for the Soviet regime. I also heard that Ocelot, Liquid's right-hand man, was an old friend of the Colonel's back in the old days of the Soviet Union. In any case, Olga inherited her father's military genius and has become a force to be reckoned with. She was born and raised on the battlefield, and she's as tough as she looks. Not my ideal choice for a date. You sound like you've met her. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Just remember what I said. Don't turn your back on her. Be careful, there are Claymore mines around there. Who is this? Stealth equipped Claymore mines, invisible to the naked eye. Use the mine detector. Identify yourself. Just call me Deep Throat. Deep Throat? You mean from Shadow Moses? Mr. X then. Mr. X now, is it? Why would it matter if I called you Deep Throat? Never mind about that. Why did you contact me? Let's just say I'm one of your fans. Colonel, someone calling himself Mr. X just contacted me. Do you know anything about it? No. And whoever it was, it wasn't a burst transmission. The transmission was sent from within the big shell. He called himself Deep Throat at first. Do you think... I caught that part too. But the possibility of it being true is none. Gray Fox was the one who used that alias in Shadow Moses, and he's dead. Is it an enemy trap? Could be. Exercise extreme caution. Raiden, don't get yourself worked up. It's safer to take out the enemy first, then look for the bomb. Don't even think about searching for the bomb while looking over your shoulder for the enemy. Knock them unconscious or take them out altogether first. Somebody there. Hmm. Freeze.
This is Raiden. I just finished disposing of the C4 in strut F. Found explosives on B1. This is all wrong. This is something only an amateur would do. What do you mean? All the bombs that have been found so far don't appear to be in the right kind of locations. And the quantity of explosives isn't sufficient either. Even Fat Man can make mistakes, right? No, there's something else going on here. Get a move on with the disposal, Raiden. I've got a bad feeling about this. Do you think it's a trap? I don't know, but I'm gonna tell Pliskin to watch his back too. Just hurry. Somebody there. Hmm. Freeze. <gasps> <gasps> oh. 
This is Raiden. The C4 found in strut A has been frozen and disposed of. Explosives were planted in the pump room on the first floor. Well done. It looks like there are no more bombs in that strut. Now, head for the other struts. Jack, do you remember the day we met? I'm kind of busy right now, Rose. <laughs> You're right, sorry. I do remember. It was right after I transferred to New York. There are all these tourists around you in front of the Federal Hall. A group of middle-aged Japanese ladies came up and asked me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building. And then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. <laughs> we started arguing and I forgot all about the tourists. I was insisting that I was right and you were doing the same. The next thing we knew, the Japanese women had gone away and we ended up going to the Skyscraper Museum to see who had the better recall. We argued all the way to Battery Park. And for nothing. 
since the museum was closed. We went our separate ways from the museum, and then I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence that we were actually working at the same place. That night we went up to the top of the Empire State. It was so beautiful. I could look down on the Chrysler building from 120 stories above ground. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning. <laughs> if it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't be together. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm taking up your time again. What? Take care. Are you going to shoot me? Are you going to shoot me? Biden reporting. The C4 in strut B has been disposed of. The wall containing the transformer panel was set to blow. Good work. Only one more left to go. This is Pliskin. Do you read me, Pete? I'm here. What's up? Ryden, you need to hear this too. I'm listening. I checked out the bottom of strut H for you, Pete. Wait, what's this about? I asked Pliskin to look around. Knowing Fat Man, I can't shake the feeling that all the bombs so far were just wrong. So did you find anything? Yeah, a hell of a lot of C4s packed into the bottom of the strut. Pete called it right. I knew he had the real thing up his sleeve. So all the other ones were dummies? No, they're a threat all right. But the detonation wouldn't be enough to destroy the entire shell. But the C4s Pliskin found would inflict serious structural damage. That's not the bad news either. These are sensor proof. What? New model, I guess. The ionization sensor can't detect them. The whole thing is sealed tight to prevent vapor leak, and there's no trace of that cologne signature. Pete, looks like he fooled you. Yes. But you managed to find the thing anyway. It was sheer luck. Bombs that are invisible to the sensor? Any ideas, Pete? Are there more out there? I will see for myself. You can't move fast enough. He's right. I can try the spray from a distance. Hold on. There's something not right about this one. I can feel it. Well, Pete, should I come back and get you? No, there's no need. Ryden, you have one left to go, correct? Right, except for those scentless ones. How about you, Pliskin? I have two left, not counting this one. Okay, 
it'll have to be me. I have the level four card that'll get me into shell two in any case. You'll never make it. With that bad leg of yours, they'll spot you for sure. That won't happen. I... I can walk just fine. I can even run. What do you mean? That bomb five years ago. I messed up. Even with all my experience, I lost it. And a church was lost in the explosion. All those kids playing nearby, too. These past five years, I've lived a lie. Lied? Yes, lied. I didn't lose my leg in the explosion. That's going a bit too far. So many dead. All because of my mistake. All I could think about was hiding from the crime, shielding myself from the public outcry. I wanted people to be sorry for me. For my weakness. You're about as low as it gets. I faked being a victim myself because I couldn't bear to face the families of the real victims. This is no prosthetic. I can keep my footing on catwalks and hike over deserts. I lived my life so well I haven't even answered to myself for my sins. It was supposed to be a shield, and it's become a shroud instead. I've killed my soul by playing the victim. Instead of protecting me, it's made my life even more hellish. What good can that do the victims? I know. I'm a coward. Hey, Pete. God forgive me. I can walk with my own two feet, and I need them to stop Fat Man. His crimes are also mine. One of omission and arrogance. No one should teach the skills I taught him without a clear conscience. This is the only way I can defuse my own sins. I get you, Pete. That one's all yours. You got it, Raiden? I understand. Pete, I've taken care of guards in exactly. struts G and H of Shell 2. I wouldn't recommend you go into any of the other struts. I owe you one. I'll get back to freezing the baby bombs, then. You do that too, Raiden. I'm on it. I'll have the radio with me if you need to get in touch. Just don't ask for Peg Leg Peter. He's gone for good.